And so long as any part of our society uh, adheres to a sexist notion that uh, men should do certain things and women should do certain things, and then begin to inculcate our babies with these notions through curriculum development and so forth, then we'll never be rid of the basic causes of sex discrimination. In 1965, Patsy Takamoto Mink became the first woman of color to serve in the United States Congress. Though Mink faced discrimination as a Japanese American woman, she would use her adversities to break racial and gender barriers in politics. Becoming the first Asian American woman elected to Hawaii's territorial legislation allowed her to become the nation's first congresswoman of color and of Asian descent in 1965. In Congress, Mink established new laws such as Title IX and the Women's Educational Equity Act, which made gender discrimination illegal in federally funded activities and provided financial support for the empowerment of women's initiatives. Through her leadership in Congress, Patsy Mink paved the way for greater racial and gender diversity for people of color and women in Congress, while transforming the roles and rights of women in the United States. Asian immigrants experienced xenophobia in the United States beginning in the late 19th century. Anti-Asian immigration legislation was first introduced in the 1880s, limiting the number of Asians from entering the U.S. A final law in the 1920s would halt all Asian immigration until 1965. During these years, Japanese immigrants became a major target of racism. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. began interning Japanese citizens and American citizens of Japanese descent in 1942, on the basis that they were menaces to the nation's well-being. The internment further reinforced the idea to the American public that those of Japanese descent were harmful and inferior. In Hawaii, they were not interned because they constitute such a large portion of the population. But they were still held with suspicion. Perhaps it calls her father being taken away in the middle of the night because they thought that he might offend the Japanese. In Hawaii especially, where Patsy Takamoto Mink grew up, a plantation society had long been established. Plantation owners were predominantly white businessmen from the mainland United States. Although Japanese made up a large portion of Hawaii's population, white plantation owners dominated all aspects of life, being at the top of the political, economical, and social ladder. As a result of World War II, women in the workforce were pushed back into domesticity after the war ended. Like many American women, Japanese American women were heavily pushed by society to become happy homemakers and the so-called perfect housewives that were highly idolized in the media. These gender and racial barriers resulted in Japanese women having high political invisibility and lack of power compared to other marginalized communities. Though becoming a doctor was an unusual choice of profession for a woman at the time, Patsy Takamoto applied to 12 medical schools in 1948, but was rejected from all institutions. In the 1940s, only 2.2% of women were enrolled in medical schools, whereas around 12% of Asian Americans had been enrolled. Ming suspected her rejections were a result of gender discrimination. Due to the GI Bill, a law allowing for male veterans from World War II to be given greater educational benefits, these men were given greater privilege into being accepted into higher education institutions. Although Patsy was academically qualified to be accepted into these medical schools, her male counterparts who had fought in the war were given greater privilege. This presumed act of gender discrimination was a great barrier to Patsy, but it pushed her to pursue law instead, which would in turn help her prevent acts of gender discrimination from happening to other women. Later in 1951, Mink became the first Japanese-American woman in Hawaii to pass the bar exam. However, law firms in Hawaii gave preference to white lawyers. Mink was further discriminated against for being in an interracial marriage and the mother of a young child at the time. In 1953, Mink decided to work as a private lawyer, saying, While I was waiting for my first client, I had an enormous amount of time to get involved in community affairs. One thing led to another, and I discovered the excitement of politics. Community activity led me into political action, achieving community progress, which was what prompted me to get into law in the first place. In 1956, Mink became the first Asian American woman elected to the Territorial House of Hawaii. Later, in 1958, after being elected to the Hawaii Territorial Senate, Mink supported women's rights by helping pass the Equal Pay for Equal Work law, which wasn't passed at the federal level until 1963. In 1959, Mink tried running for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, but was ultimately unsuccessful. In 1964, a second seat was created for Hawaii in the U.S. House of Representatives, and Mink took this opportunity to run again for a seat in the House. 
With no funding and support from the Democratic Party, Mink was funded only through small contributions, and while her campaign was run by volunteers, Mink worked hard to be elected from the primary and was able to run against Hawaii's favorite Democrat, Spark Matsunaga. Mink successfully ran for the seat, breaking barriers as the first woman of color and of Asian descent in Congress. Prior to her election, in Congress there had only been 63 women, all of them being Caucasian, and four Asian Americans who were all men. Mink broke barriers by being one of only 11 women in the 89th Congress, the first woman of color and of Asian descent. Although very popular amongst Congress, Mink was often belittled in the press, which focused on her petite physicality rather than her political views. Patsy Mink worked for a total of 24 years in Congress, with the first half of her political career working and making large contributions in the Committee on Education and Labor. By being elected as Congresswoman, Mink was able to show America what an Asian American woman could do for her people. After two consecutive terms, Mink helped to pass imperative legislation for women. The barriers she faced when denied to medical school and the birth of her daughter spurred Patsy on to improve the status of the female by co-authoring Title IX with Representative Edith Green and Senator Birch Bay. Title IX was made law on July 1, 1972, legalizing gender discrimination in any and all federal programs that related to education, stating that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation under any educational program or activity receiving federal assistance. Although Title IX legalized gender discrimination from occurring, there were no funds to actively change the discrimination women faced. Patsy Mink was instrumental in starting the funds to allow this to happen by helping author and co-sponsor the Women's Educational Equity Act with Senator Walter Mondale in 1974. This act provided the funding necessary to implement changes to sexist school curriculum, create women's studies programs, and support organizations that empowered women. The act was the first program to allocate government funding for gender equality. After Patsy Mink's work in passing Title IX in the Women's Educational Equity Act, most secondary education curriculum was rewritten and there was a dramatic increase of women in both school athletics and higher education, thus allowing American women to break even greater barriers for themselves. Participation from girls in collegiate sports is six times greater and ten times greater in high school sports than it was in the 1980s. By 1981, there were continuously more women than men with bachelor degrees, and by 1986, the number of women with master's degrees exceeded men. Through Mink's work in passing Title IX and the Women's Educational Equity Act, in 1975, there was the greatest increase in women with bachelor degrees than there had been within the past decade. Mink also aided in improving the status of Asian Americans by helping form the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus on May 16, 1994. Mink served as its first chairwoman in 1995 with the purpose to vocalize issues to Congress and ensure legislation was inclusive of the needs of Asian Pacific Islander communities. Mink's ability to break barriers and ascend to Congress as the first woman of color ultimately helped pave the way for greater gender and racial diversity in Congress. Since her election, there have been 301 more women and 49 more Asian Americans, with 12 of them being women in Congress. After Mink's death in 2002, Congress officially renamed Title IX the Patsy Takamoto Mink Equal Opportunity in Education Act. In 2014, Patsy Mink was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama, further signifying her work for women's rights and political career in Congress. Being faced with both immense racial and gender barriers, Mink strove to break those barriers for herself and others. As Barbara Taveras, Sex Equity Coordinator of Hawaii said, Every girl who has a chance to enter medical school, apply for financial aid, or to play sports in school owes a nod of thanks to Patsy Mink. She unremittingly and dauntlessly challenged old stereotypes about a woman's place and helped engineer steady progress for girls and women. Through being elected as the first woman of color of Asian descent in Congress, Mink sought improvement for the Asian American community, helped promote diversity in Congress, and passed significant women's rights legislation. Title IX has torn down barriers for women and girls in America. Millions of girls and women have more opportunities available to them because of Congresswoman Overcoming Patsy racial Mink. barriers as a Japanese American and gender barriers as a woman, Patsy Mink becoming a Congresswoman has helped pave the way for greater gender and racial equality in politics and her legislation has helped fundamentally change the view of women in America. Without a doubt, Patsy Mink was a barrier breaker.